What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of CNC. This is episode number 40. We start today's episode off on the back of the 1-1 draw against the Baggies at the Hawthorns with a bid for Sam Bowen from Standard Liège. 1.5 mil for the former Bluebird who's been with us since the very first episode. And as I looked at my budget, just over £9 million remaining. I decided to say to the Belgians, all right, let's negotiate and see if I can get a little bit more cash. In the end, as you can see, an extra 200k means that it is one and three quarter million for Sam. And that's a bit of a shame as well because he's been one of the underrated squad players here. He's 69 overall, 23 years old. Look, in terms of long term future for club and country, he's not got much of one. I'm, you know, just going to be totally honest here. But. I did like him to be fair, it was before Ben Davis came in, he was one of the regular stars in this team, since Ben arrived he just hasn't been able to get consistent game time, but he's been pretty decent, I didn't really want to sell him as our backup centre mid, but if we are going to make a big signing on deadline day, I needed to raise the cash, I had to make a couple of sacrifices, Sam is going to be one of those guys as he's off to standard the age. Anyway, for the first game of today's episode, the Bees taking on Thomas Frank as Brentford here uh, at Newport County. They did not gain promotion last season. They didn't have a great season by their standards, but they've still got some of their key players, including this man, Brian Mbwema, right now the top scorer in the championship to start the season off this season. Makes it 1-0, and Brentford take what was a very early lead. And after a pretty poor start to the season, I couldn't really afford another defeat so early on into the campaign. 21 minutes in, chance here, Lloyd Lloyd just skewing a shot way over the bar, got completely underneath that one as the B still led by a goal. But playing a high press, forcing him to give the ball straight back to us here from the goal kick. Rabi Matondo flicks on the kick long by Balcombe. We win it straight back, quick little one two, and Rabi with the finish into the bottom corner. You know, you saw it at the start of the season, I did decide to make the decision and finally convert him from winger to centre forward initially, once he gets to CF position, I might then train him to a striker afterwards. Once he's got the initial CF, then I might train him to ST. But yeah, it's it's the right call. It's only his second goal of the season, but the dude is just, I mean, he's brilliant. He was the second highest scorer in the championship last year. And I mean, 40 minutes in after we clear a corner off the line. Look at this guy go! He's absolutely rapid. Steps in from the left, goes all the way and smashed it in. I mean, this guy literally got the ball that was cleared from the corner and said, I'm taking this coast to coast and going all the way, which is what he does third of the season and Rabi single-handedly turns the game on its head and wins it for us. Final score, Newport County 2, Brentford 1. All three goals coming in the first half. Matondo's brace gives us the victory. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I made a bad decision last year. I had such cold feet, and I was so indecisive. I was like, oh, but what if Alan Bound kicks on? What if we find someone else to do the striker role? Look, I got it wrong, okay? I'm the first to admit when I've got it wrong. I got it horribly wrong. Ravi was on fire last year. Second high score in the championship. I should have converted him to striker last season. He would have got it, you know, by now, he would have got it. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. Unfortunately, I made the wrong choice there. But better late than never, Ravi is turning into a centre forward. Still following that, we sold Simmons, our backup goalkeeper, for 1.75 mil as well. So after raising 3.5 mil for the sales of Simmons and Bowen as well. Our budget now was around 11.4 million pounds and as you see a few players going into national duty they'll miss the whole game away at the is it again is it the kcom it's called the kcom now we'll miss a few players for that game there that's just real briefly as a breakaway that's so frustrating by the way like there's two games a season in the championship where you'll miss a load of players going on international duty as we know in in english football the top two leagues the championship and the premier league when the international break occurs they also go on a break as well. It's only League 1 and League 2 that don't go on the break and play resumes. But for some reason in FIBA CM, there's a couple of games a season, one at the beginning and then one towards the end, where you'll play on as normal and your players will go away on international duty and you left a soldier on without them. So we're going to be missing Humphreys, we're missing our starting goalkeeper Price, Rochesh is going away. I mean, it's just very frustrating knowing we're some key players that gain their away against Hull City. Anyway, following that, Rodney Parade, Stoke City, aiming for a big win here and back-to-back. 
This was just one of those really infuriating games of FIFA. And you'll have them, I have them. What's that saying I say quite a lot in this year's FIFA? Good is not good enough against the AI on Ultimate. 34 minutes in, we've been a far better team. Gavin Humphreys goes down, but thankfully Wood Soldier on. And for the entire game, it was all Newport County. You saw on match day two of the season away against Rotherham. We drew that game 0-0 despite being absolutely dominant. And this game against Stoke here was no different. I was just completely completely hammering the potters right from the very first whistle and with 14 minutes to go oh my god I knew at this point I knew at this point I wasn't going to do it Ben Davis misses the one-on-one -on -one, and then Rabi's very tame effort from the rebound is easily saved it's still goalless and I was thinking it's just one of those games where you're, you're far better than your opponent but you just can't get the one goal and that's all you need to get the win and with nine minutes goals, I was thinking okay it's all right I'll take a point no, I won't. I'll lose that as well. The former Spurs midfielder, Oakley Booth, finds a little bit of room in the area, chip ball into him, and he volleys past Price what would be the game winner. Yeah, as frustrating as it gets, that one. Newport nil, Stoke one. As I always say, I present the highlights package very fairly. I dominated that game, man. How I lost by a goal to nil, I don't know. I definitely got, as you call it, EA'd in that game. There. That was so frustrating. As I always say... Good is not good enough against the AI on Ultimate. You need to be better because you'd have games like that one where you dominate, but you still can't take the one chance to give you the win. One of the final score, big loss there against Stokes. As deadline day comes around, 11.5 mil in the budget. I was thinking, okay, let's do it. Let's make the big signing. I've been talking about these four players on the shortlist. Ethan and Padu, Ben Capango, Joe Rodham and Chris Metham. Now, Metham and Cabango, I would say, are out of my price range, which I would say, realistically, left me with two. Ethan and Padu and Joe Rodden. Now, the one I really wanted was Ben Cabango. Uh, moving on from Swansea to Schalke in the game, but I said to the lads from Gelson and Kirkin, how much do you want? I'll include a big sell-on clause, and they were like, £20 million. Pounds. <laughs> so I thought, fair enough. I'm not, I'm not even going to bother negotiating. When the starting bid they counter with is so high and inflated, there's no point in even trying. It's over at that point. You're not going to get him. So I said, fair enough. Off we go back to Germany. That's fair enough with me. I won't bother. I knew it would probably be out of my price range anyway. However, I did know the other two players on my shortlist there, Joe Rodden and Ethan and Padu, were more realistic targets for me in terms of the money we had remaining. So we negotiated a deal with Nuno, now Spurs' head of transfer negotiations of 9.5 mil uh, for the former Swansea defender moving on to Spurs. And for Padu at Chelsea, to be fair, this is a really good deal, just £7 million negotiated with Thomas Tuchel. That would be a bit of a bargain, I'd say, for the young 23-year-old. But I looked at both players and I thought, right, now Padu is three years younger. But Rodden is three years, uh, sorry, three years older, but three ratings higher. He's out of contract at the end of the season. I think he'll get triggered an automatic extension during the season. So I thought if I'm going to sign Joe Rodden, this is the best deal available for me, possibly forever. He's better than Mpadu now. And in the end, I thought we probably need more quality ASAP as opposed to a player with maybe, possibly, maybe slightly higher potential. So in the end, that was my thought process. I opted for Joe Rodden. A massive weekly wage of 40 grand a week. That is insane. Even if it is a pay cut, but even so, at 77 overall, he becomes our best defender in this team. And I'd, I'd like to think he'll help us in the back line now. Now, he's six foot four, so I call him a big new centre-back. He is big. He's very big indeed with 81 strength and 82 jumping. I'll give him the stopper development plan to get his defensive work rate up from medium to high. The only thing that concerns me is that whilst his sprint speed is really good, his acceleration is really low. It's like a real polar opposite. I think his acceleration is only something like 59. So that's part of the reason why I'm giving a stop of development plan to train that up. I will start as part of our back three. I was thinking whether it's Taylor or Cooper that comes out. Because Payne will, of course, start. But I'm going to uh, drop Taylor to the bench. I, I could maybe play Taylor in his old position as holding mid. But right now, Ben Davis is still growing <laughs> despite being in his 30s at 83 overall. So Taylor now, despite doing nothing wrong, is going to drop to the bench. And also for Impadu as well. Now, we know this guy can play both centre-half and centre-holding mid. I think Impadu, to me, looks a bit more like a defensive midfielder as opposed to a centre-back. Really comfortable on the ball. Very good protector in the back line. So I think I made the right choice there going for Joe as opposed to Ethan. But I had to do this. There was a little bit of money remaining on deadline day. Not enough for a new transfer, but enough for a new loan signing. I was thinking, do you know what? I've had this guy the past two years. Let's do it again. Dylan Levitt running it back, coming back to Rodney Parade on loan on a one-year deal negotiator. What are you going to sell, Shard there? So... 
yeah, in comes Levitt on loan on deadline day to join Joe Rodden as well. And we're looking for transfers this season as well. I think we actually raised slightly more money than we spent for the signing of Joe Rodden. As we know, Norrington Davis and Bales Regen, or we assume Bales Regen came in on freeze. Levitt's on loan as well. So I have to say, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that window there. We didn't spend an astronomical amount, but instead, I think we actually raised slightly more money than we lost in the season. We culled a lot of our squad who don't have much potential for club and country for the future. And we also brought in a class centre-half in Joe Rodden, Norrington Davis and Bales Regen on freeze, and Levitt back in on loan as well. We've got more squad depth this season, a bit more quality in squad depth, I should say, if not quantity. But also, of course, bringing in Joe Rodden as well. That represents great first-team quality in the back as well. So we've now risen to a four-star team. We're now one of the best teams in the championship. The board has said to us this season, automatic promotion, but after a tough start to the campaign, six games in, only the two wins on the board. I'm being realistic. Here. I'll take top 10 once again. Sneaking into the playoffs, that'll be a dream. But for me, championship stability is the most important thing this year. But that will be this episode of CNC, and see you guys. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you please drop a like. Most love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of C and C very soon.